godly life. In this present age, while we wait for the for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a Thank people you. that are this very own, eager to do what is good. These, then, are the things you should teach. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Amen. That's really powerful, isn't it? Okay, guys, enough of me. I'm going to give you first opportunity to come in. Who wants to come in and share on that? Remember, this is an open Bible study. We're, we're all learning together. Nothing, no statement's a silly statement. Just come in and just let's see, let's break down what the word of God's telling us. I'm going to challenge you. In fact, I'm going to pick someone. Kevin, what's going on in there for you? Yeah, thanks, Ivor. Thanks, brother. Um, yeah, good evening. God bless everyone. What's going on in there? I mean, you know, straight away, you know, he talks about the grace. You know, it's all grace. And, it? you know, um, you know, Ephesians talks about saved by grace through faith. Training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions. I mean, I did have to look. I wasn't here last week, so I had to look at um, Titus 1. It talks about, you know, elders and sound doctrine and and um you know you you sort of touched on it either you know god had to put some people in my path man and i got bent out of shape all the time man believe me there was a lot of strongholds you know i had to be trained i had to come out of agreement with stuff i had to renounce stuff and um and it talks about the spirit in your mind doesn't it you know it's enmity the pride and the and the rebellion and and I had to start lining up to, to my advisors. I even know someone I worked with and you couldn't mess about with that stuff, you know? Um, but I just touch on, obviously I, I took some notes as usual. I try not to bang on too long because Go on, mate. <laughs> it just takes me everywhere, this, this Bible, the Bible and, and, you know, it does light me up. But um, <laughs> what I will say is, um, you know, Paul term, he says Titus 11 to 13, this is the heart of the letter, emphasising that God's sovereign purpose in calling out elders one to five and in commanding his people, it's not a suggestion, it's a command, do you know what I mean? Look, this Amen. is how you need to live your life. And in commanding his people to live righteously, and that's uh, two, one to ten, is to provide the witness, you know, we overcome by the blood and the word of our testimony, that brings God's plan and purpose of salvation to fulfillment. Paul condensed the saving plan of God into three realities. One, salvation from the penalty, that's verse 11. Two, the power and the presence of sin. You know, because I know, you, you know, for me, when I was um, before Christ, you know, I was, I was, you know, I was, I was, I was a slave, you know what I mean? I was, I was, a, I was a key fob on the devil's chain, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I slave to my lust, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And, and you know, and I got paid. <laughs> Charles institutions and, you know, all that gear that we talk about in recovery. And and it says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God, free gift, the grace, you know, that is his remarkable, overwhelming gift of grace to believers is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And, um goes on to add the, about the resurrection amounts to the Father's clear signal that Jesus is the powerful Son of God who has conquered death and reigns as Lord of all. The resurrection demonstrated that Jesus' blood of the new covenant saves his people from their sins. And Paul goes on to talk about it in um, Philippians as well. He says, that, indeed, I count everything as a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, Jesus, my Lord. And to be found in him, not having the righteousness from my own that comes from the law, but which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. You know, and I just like, obviously, these are commentaries as well. And, you know, it says in three, uh, Philippians 3.10 um, that I may know him. Paul's emphasis here is on gaining a deeper knowledge and intimacy with Christ, the power of his resurrection, you know, 
because I don't think, you know, Jesus wants us to stay on the cross. Do you know what I mean? He wants to know the power of his resurrection. You know, that grace isn't a license to sin. Grace is strength, uh, gives us the ability to overcome sin in our lives and live godly lives. And, and um, you know, and it goes on to say, Christ's resurrection must graphically demonstrate the extent of his power. You know, Jesus is, you know, Jesus gave up his life on the cross for us and, and he rose again. And he said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside us. But, I, I, you know, I appreciate we have to come to, to know that power because everything was in Christ. Everything was in Christ. You know, the fullness of God, you know, healing, deliverance, breakthrough. It was all in the blood. You know, it says in Galatians 3.13 that he um, cursed is the man that hung on the tree. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, we have to renounce that gear. We have to come out because we give the legal rights to the enemy. Do you know what I mean? We bought into all that jargon. You know what I mean? And 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 it goes on to say, Christ displayed His power over both the physical and spiritual worlds, and and share His sufferings. This refers to a partnership, a deep communion, suffering. You know, when you're coming out of that old way of life, man, you have to. You know, it's hard work because we're wrestling, aren't we, against the flesh? Do you know what I mean? And and it's painful sometimes, but we know that and God is a God of transformation. And, and then we've got the Holy Spirit in us today. You know, it's, we can have the, it's just we have the mind of Christ. And, and, and the carnal mind can't take on spiritual things. Do you know what I mean? And I don't want to make it sound too easy. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not. But, you know, it's that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It says, here, as Christ died for the persons of redeeming sinners, so Paul had that same purpose in a lesser sense. He lived and would willingly die to reach sinners with the gospel. His life and death through not redemptive were for the same purposes as his Lord's. Goes on to say, Paul speaks of the power of his resurrection and focuses on one aspect. He wants to know him. You know, that, that like, I think through my, the different stages in my, in my faith, right? And um, I would like, you know, I'd like to say today, What's more important to me today is knowing him, knowing him and the power of his resurrection. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I, I knew, I, I, I realised when I went through the work, how much I'd been forgiven. That enabled me to realise that I was forgiven. I could forgive myself. I don't carry around that gear no more. My mind's been renewed around that stuff. And able to forgive and I ain't got it on. I ain't attained yet. Right? So prayer for my enemies and blessing those that curse me and all that. I'm still, you know, I've had the heart transplant, I've had the blood transfusion, but I needed the personality change. Do you know what I mean? And and that's ongoing. And based, you know, the gospel and it? it's the grace of God. Do you know what I mean? That, you know, whilst we were still sinners, man, living ungodly lives, and no matter what we were doing, we were all living ungodly lives. We weren't submitted to the Lord Jesus. We weren't submitting to one another. And today, you know, I can submit to people today by the grace of God. You know, I can still be a bit resistant. I can still be a bit defensive. You know, I can still take things personally. But I just say, see that taking things personally, take that person and get off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Leave it there. Thanks for letting me share, Ivar. Oh, wow. What an opening. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Kevin. This is it. It's all about contribution. That's beautiful. Thank you for that. Touch me, touch me, touch me. Over to you, Gem Gemma. <clears throat> Hi, uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone. So great to be here. Um, it's mad because, like last week, it was all like it was quite heavy. Um, it was all about what was it all about? It was not about grace, basically. <laughs> and then we get to here, and then it just literally switches up. So, like, this is why it's so important like to just keep reading because we can always get stuck in a scripture can't we and like not hear the aftermath of the second part so obviously where it says the the grace of God that brings salvation and and it's really important like we know that we don't like we each one of us here we know that we didn't go out and get salvation like we didn't go out and find it but it comes to us and um each and every one of us, we have that opportunity to receive it. And then um, it's really important that 
we understand that grace we understand the importance of it and we understand what it's come to do within our lives so um like because God doesn't have like a gospel of grace just for like me or either he has it for each and every one of us he has the gospel of grace for everyone and like sometimes we we can like we add in little bits of legalism or self-justification sometimes and but it's really important that we remember that we are all under the gospel of grace and not to like sometimes I can what I can do is I can put like expectations on other people because and almost put my look like put legalistic views on other people but not on myself and it can easily be done like so it's it's good to remember the importance of the grace and um yeah and then it goes on to say about teaching us and um it's really important to understand what the grace does because um like it speaks this this is like where it speaks of like a parent a parent teaching a child so this is what the grace does and um it speaks of the entire training process so this is where paul's talking about now so he's speaking about teaching he's speaking about encouragement he's speaking about correction and he's speaking about discipline so if we was to look at that from another point of view like are we able like as individuals like i'm not going to talk about the other people that are giving us this but as individuals are we able to receive teaching are we able to receive encouragement like I remember the first time somebody said to me at church like she pulled me aside and she was like you're doing really well and I thought like I was really embarrassed I was really uncomfortable I was really like oh like oh like what are you doing like don't give me encouragement like I don't need your encouragement (laughs) but like learning to accept that learning to to think yeah like I I received that and um then also on the other side is the correction and the discipline what I know I don't like I don't like people correcting me I don't like discipline so learning to really um able to um be corrected and not take it with offense to be disciplined without and being accountable to Um, the people around me the elders around me being accountable to my husband so like this is where that grace is the teacher in in this sense and it's really important because that's what if we didn't if we're not living in that grace we we it's hard to receive these things it's hard to not get offended it's hard to receive compliments it's hard to receive teaching it's really difficult but if we're in that grace of Jesus then we're almost more open to receive it and be able to take on board and from that we can then grow and we can learn and we can change and we can become sanctified and we can grow within our faith and we can grow within our relationship with Jesus because we hear it a lot sometimes oh yeah yeah I'm just getting on with my relationship with God or I'm doing this but we we can't do this on our own like the fellowship is unfortunately I wish we could do this on our own sometimes because it can be really difficult but like the fellowship is in and having them people in the body of Christ around us is really really important and really much needed and then it goes on to saying about denying ungodliness and worldly lust and um grace puts ungodliness and worldly lust in our past and um now grace teaches us to renounce those things not only to avoid them so okay so we know that we suffer with something yeah we know and we we think okay so for example my my thing is i suffer with a drug addiction okay so now i'm avoiding it but the grace is teach teach me that I have to come out of that place of denial and I have to renounce these things and I have to really like I'm using that as an extreme example but that could apply to any area in our life like me and Chloe talk a lot about our parenting and things that we do wrong on a day-to-day basis but if I was to justify my behavior I don't go into a place of renunciation and and coming away from them things and and going through more sanctification because I will just be stuck in the in 
in the oh I'm okay I'm, I'm I'm doing good I'm better than them or oh I didn't da, da, da. so it's really important that we not only avoid them the sins that we are, are to participate in and the only god ungodliness and the worldly lust but we actually renounce them and um, that brings us into um, a closer relationship with Jesus because obviously we come to his feet and then we can connect with him and then it goes on to say about the denying and um um like one man say that in a world where we are tempted to say yes to every desire and feeling that the reality of our faith can be demonstrated by what we say no to by what we are willing to deny so I've got some things at the moment where I, I don't really want to do and it's like the reason I don't want to do them, if I really look at it deeply, is not because it's because of my own selfishness. And that's not good. Do you know what I mean? If I've committed to something, I need to follow it through. I need to let my word be yes. Do you know what I mean? If I've said yes, let my no be no and my yes be yes. So because of my own selfishness and my own laziness and my own I can't be botheredness. I'm then thinking, okay, so this is really important to me. It's like we really have to deny that flesh and we really have to follow through with where we even, I can do it all the time and I, I, I backtrack and I don't want to do something. So it's really important that I just stay on, on the right path. And I just love this scripture where it says that we should live sober, soberly, righteousness and godly in the present age. And how difficult is it to live in them things in this present age it can be really really tough and um yeah it can be really really difficult because there's so much worldliness going on there's so much stuff and even within the own it within your own church and it's not it's it's hard it can be really really difficult um but it then go. it gives us that bit of hope where it says looking for the blessed hope and this is where the grace teaches us to expect and prepare for our blessed hope and that hope is not heaven or glory but Jesus himself and um, face to face closer than ever so the hope is in Jesus so even this was another thing even when we're going through the storms and we're going through these things like it doesn't matter because we have our hope in Jesus and um I wrap it up on this because it says um it the last bit it says looking for the blessed hope and then it goes on to say looking for and this indicates that Christians should live in active expectation for the return of Jesus it should be precious for Christians to consider and um I'll just read these out and then I'll leave it there and it and he, um, that we should consider that he came the first time to save the soul of man and he will come a second time to resurrect the body um, he came the first time to save the individual and he will come the, a second time to save society and he came the first time um, to the crucifixion and he will come the second time to a coronation he came the first time to a tree he will come a second time to a throne and he came the first time to humility he will come a second time in glory he came the first time and was judged by men he will come a second time to judge all men and lastly he came the first time and stood before Pilate and he will come a second time and Pilate will stand before him and it last but not least it goes on to say our great God and um, this is the only place in the New Testament in which megas is applied to the true God although in a constant um, predicate of heaven heathen gods and goddesses aka e.g acts 1928 so um yeah and then it goes on to speak about the heart of the god of grace but i'll leave it there and pass back on you're muted Ivan. yeah very 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 powerful stuff so we're we're, we're talking you know and, and it's really good that we're getting engaged because we're now we're seeing you know in the first two speakers we're, we're bringing out our conduct into the play here which is really 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 good important and before i just move on to chloe i just want us to just look at there's four things there that should be noted about this grace 
four things and if you want to take notes feel free to do so um it is god's grace and therefore it is to be found in all who profess to be his so this grace that god has given us is found in all of us who profess to be his so he's given it to us that unmerited favor and we've received it you know so the, the, you know if we're saying that we're a believer we've received it because he's in us you know so we have to demonstrate that grace to others because it's been demonstrated to us you know if we profess and we say that we are his that's the first command here on this particular passage what he's talking about and it says it appeared when jesus christ entered into the world so we can see right back into one john when the, when when the word became flesh and it was dealt among us and we've seen his glory and we've seen his glory as the son who came from the father full of the grace of truth as it says in one john 14 and it says john testified concerning him he cried out saying this is the one i spoke about when he was about to baptize him he said here he is he came right there we see it john 14 that he came and god in his incarnation it appeared and it says in three the scope of the extent of this grace is revealed as to all men, and this does not mean that each of us and each individual has seen this grace. So we have to keep working out our sanctification, staying on that right path, that narrow road to kind of like understand that unmerited favor. And that's why we've got to be in the word. That's why we, as Gemma said, we need to be around believers. We need to be, you know, in that place of accountability. You know, I, 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 I meet up with a man, you know, practically every monday sometimes every two weeks you know and sometimes you know um you I think, oh, God, do you know what I mean? I've got to go and pour out, do you know what I mean? And like today, it was just an hour of just dun, 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 just a flowing conversation. And, and what came out of that, it wasn't the conversation, it was how important and how necessary it is for us to have that place of accountability where we can just kind of like just be in a place where we can just, do you, you know what I mean? It was like, I, it was like I was poured out when I came out of there and I felt so relieved. Do you know what I mean? Because there was a lot of gear there and it wasn't stuff. It was just, there was so much on and I got revelation. I got prayer. I got answers. And it was like, sometimes we don't want to do the, the right things, but we need to, you know, you know, and it's so important. And, and that's the purpose. It shows us the purpose of this grace is to bring salvation to all men and women. Chloe, over to you. Hey, my friend. Hello. Jeez. Yeah, I, that, I was um, going to say something very similar to Gemma. Just reading, num going through num number two is kind of giving us, you know, how we should conduct ourselves, how we should be in the church and how it would have like a ripple effect oh, onto, the, onto the, um, the body. And then it brings us to the source. How do we, how do we act self-controlled, worthy of respect, um, temper, temperament and endurance? And it brings us to the source, which is the cross, which is the authority of the grace that he's given onto us. Um, and I think so many times when we go into a situation or you know, if we're not if we're not bringing it back to the cross, then it has no fruit. If we're not bringing it back to what he did on the cross, and bringing it to the cross with the grace. Then that we won't be able to bear fruit. We won't be able to ha um, have ungodliness. You know, we'll be drawn to worldly passions. So, I just I just kind of felt like. The cross should always be at the center, should always be at the center of everything we do. Every situation we go in, there should be, we should draw close to the cross and have that understanding of what it means, you know, have that understanding of what Jesus did for all of us to, to have and how he must, how he must um, show others what that means as well if we have an understanding what the cross is then we should live by that cross 
and act by that cross. Um, yeah, I just thought it was really, really powerful. Um, and the authority, I think, I think we lack to understand the authority that we hold um, with with Jesus. We we there's a lot of lacking in the body of the authority that we have that we can stand on and we can live this this life but we need to draw this we need to draw from the source you know we're not living in the old testament where there was all these laws and legalism we're living under the grace now so we're able to draw from that source which is jesus we're able to draw from that source which is the holy spirit and we're able to like you were saying, Ivy, um, you just felt like you were pouring out. Like that's why we need to fill up our cup. And like you said, be in the word, be be getting uh, getting that a fresh anointing, not for ourselves, but for everyone around us. That anointing, which is the grace, which is the salvation, which is the new covenant covenant is for us to pour out onto everyone that is around us, our anointing, our calling. Yeah. Really, really, really encouraging. Amen. Amen. That anointing to pour out. He's given us, that's beautiful, that is. He's given us that grace so that we can be that salt and light on the earth, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? That it's so powerful. And I love what you said about, you know, the cross, the demonstration of the cross is, is when we look at the cross, it shows us that Jesus crucified the flesh and all those around him. He crucified, he demonstrated, he beat Satan, he resurrected from the dead. So you know, that, that resurrection power in us. So, you know, when we're down, when we're feeling low, we, we need to tap into the cross, died for us so that we could have eternal life. And the resurrected power in order to activate the life that we all have today to, to that he's given us that spirit in us, the Holy Spirit. We cannot, as, as Chloe said, it's important that we walk with the spirit of God in us side by side and have that understanding that he is with us. That's powerful stuff. Beautiful, Chloe. Excellent stuff. Dick, over to you. Hey, Brent, was Rory before me? Rory had his hand Rory, up before me. Rory, how, how did you end up at the back there, Rory? Come in. Hey, that's okay. Um, no, I, I, um, I think, you know what, I think um, I was just reading through and um, had something I, I wanted to kind of add. Um, but hey, I'm okay. I can, I can go next. I don't, I don't mind. No, carry on. Carry on. Um, you sure? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, mega points from everyone here, like on this uh piece of scripture and you were saying earlier uh, there's quite a lot to unpack from it and um yeah i think um you know one thing that kind of strikes me quite a lot is um the grace um verse 11 here first first verse uh for the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men um and i, I kind of often think in you know my journey um the the grace that god gives you know he kind of he gives us all the space uh in order to grow you know um and uh, you know someone once told me this that was really quite interesting that um it's almost like god looks at us through the lens of his son and he's kind of saying like this is the potential this is what is possible like to you know when i say um you know because we're all growing and we're all learning and um you know part of really what the scripture is talking about is is is, is learning and growing and uh, you know i think you know moving through the verses here um verses 12 and 13 um you know about the teaching uh to you know go forwards and to um you know be transformed into his image um day by day verse 13 kind of reminds me of uh philippians you know where apostle paul says um and this is apostle paul speaking he was like uh, dear brothers and sisters i don't count myself to have um uh you know uh achieved it yet but this one thing i do is forgetting the things behind me and looking on pressing on pushing mm -hmm. on moving forwards 
um, you know, that upward calling um, is what he was talking about. And, um, you know, that's verse 13, you know, for me, like looking for that blessed hope, um, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And um, it, it's almost like, um, like it feels to me like linking in with that scripture from first John, you know, where it says uh, we don't yet know what we will be, but we, we know when we see him, we'll be like him because we'll see him as he is. Now that scripture from first John. Um, so that looking on and that looking forward. And I think, you know, this part here that kind of um, made me kind of think about a few things as well, like um, exhortation and rebuke with all authority. And um, to be honest with you, like, I, I kind of really need that, you know, in my life, you know, even from, you know, my brothers and sisters, you know, like in the body, you know, just to have someone there to say, hey, by the way, I uh, just wanted to let you know, or, hey, um, you know, it just, it, it kind of, you know, obviously, and, and you were saying about this earlier, it's, you know, it's kind of tough when that happens, you know, um, but, you know, it, it, it's the way, it's the way you grow, isn't it, you know, um, and it's just being able to kind of take it humbly and, and, um, and be able to kind of um, um, push on and, and grow in that. Um, so, yeah, no, but yeah, really powerful scripture. Sorry, that's pretty much um, my 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 two cents on that one. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. That's brilliant, Rory. Thank you very very much for that. Absolutely fantastic. So we got um, Dick and Neil, and then we move on. Yeah, so Dick, far away from. Thank, thanks, Avery. Just just a just a couple of things. I, I'm on the same um, sheet as um, Gemma, um, and I say, I share this with everybody because you may find it very helpful. You know, what Gemma's reading from there is enduringword.com, right? And if you're struggling with scripture and you're not sure about things, David Guzik is the guy that does Enduring Word, and you'll get him on YouTube as well. And he gives a very good breakdown of all these scriptures. And, you know, he breaks it down verse by verse. And like Gemma, that's my go-to whenever I'm struggling whenever I'm wanting um, just an, a, an instant look at what the scripture is actually saying. And in, in, in David Gusick's enduring word, he, he gives different opinions from different um, preachers. I really like to, uh, my, my, one of my go-to men is Charles Spurgeon. I like what Spurgeon says, because I think he puts a real, a real life touch to, to life, you know, because he talks, I truly believe from his heart, you know, and a couple of things that, that he said in this here, and he says the discipline of grace, according to the apostle, has three results, denying, living and looking. You see the three words before you, denying, looking and living. And another thing that I loved at what he says further down, he said, um, if we can find it. And again, this is Spurgeon. He says, um, or maybe he doesn't say it because I can't find it. He <laughs> says the most difficult part of training young of training of young men is not to put the right thing into them, but to get the wrong thing out of them. You know, the demons are within. That's where a lot of demons come from. They're from within. So if we don't address the demons within, remember, we're fighting a spiritual battle here. Mm. We're fighting against the demons. So we need that, you know, the, the wee verse where, where, where the, the, the demon leaves the guy, you know, you have to get the demon out. You have to get the evil spirit out to let the Holy Spirit in. And it's so important when the evil spirit leaves us, when we get born again, that will fill it up with the Holy Spirit because in that in that parable or in that story, that demon went and got seven demons and come back, found the place empty and went back in and it was worse than it was at the start. So yeah. I just like what Spurgeon said there. It's not, it's not put the right thing into them, but they get the wrong thing out of them. And I'll leave it at that, Abra. Thanks for letting me share that. Yeah. And 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 you and you hit the nail on the head because you know so many aspects in terms of that is 
you know, when you take the wrong thing out of you, what are you filling that up with? That needs that, that it's like that hole needs to be blocked off. Do you know what I mean? With the Holy Spirit and that fresh anointing then needs to pour out daily and it needs to be continuous. Do you know what I mean? So you, you, it's really, really powerful stuff. Do you know what I mean? And, it, and there's a responsibility and a duty from us. And there's a, we got it. We've got that cleansing power of the word of God, the word of truth. And if we're putting that in us on a daily basis, you know, it will continue to renew our minds and our heart and crucify the flesh you know it's when we put it down when we put the word down and when we go back and it's very very careful you know this is why we need to be in the word daily this is why we need to be around christians daily this is why we need to be in prayer daily this is why we need to kind of like in that place because it's so true do you know what i mean we can you, you listen complacency can be our worst enemy that's all I'm going to say. You know, we cannot afford to get complacent about this stuff. You know, once we, you know, we, we well, once the grace finds us, you know, it's, 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 it's up to us to kind of like be in that relationship with Christ and, and to build on that relationship with Christ in him with all those things the tools that he gives us is powerful it's like you, you you know we see people in in 12 step recovery you know they go to meetings but they won't do service they won't read the book they won't get sponsored they won't work the steps and you see what happens it's pretty much the same in our christian walk you know we need to be a part of the body we need to be in prayer we need to be in the word of god we need to be constantly in that place renewing 10 11 and 12 continuing improving and practice learning about the word of god and these spiritual principles in our life because the bar's been raised it's been raised to another level you know you know I can't look at another woman. You know, that might be all right for those in the world, but it ain't all right for somebody like me here. It's a different level. It's a different standard. It's different gear. The bar's been raised here. You know, and I always say that the, 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 the steps will right size me, but my walk with Christ will bring the righteousness of Christ to fruit in me hallelujah you know that's why it's important when we're looking at you know that that process of surrender in one three six and ten continuing in the inventory improving in practice you know it's it's very very powerful you know the way that you, you know god works and moves in our lives so it's powerful neil over to you thanks Oliver. um yeah just uh something that chloe mentioned which uh which resonated with me is i'm reading about bringing it to the cross uh, and I'm reading um, Joshua at the moment, book of jo um, Joshua. And in that book, he obviously, he goes and does a number of battles. Um, when he goes to, he starts off on one side of the um, the River Jordan, which is, I can't remember what exactly the relationship is with bringing it to the cross there, but that's where it starts. That's where he gets the message from Moses to go and do this conquest uh, of Canaan and that, that area. So that's where it starts. Now, <laughs> When he goes over the first place he goes to jericho and he follows god's instructions there and he asks god for he takes it to the cross and he asks for um advice and guidance and you know and what have you and they defeat jericho <clears throat> just by walking around it basically um, and then after that they then go on to the next one i believe is ai or it's, it's, it's the letters a and i uh a -R -R -I, and they don't seek god's guidance there so they don't go to the cross and they they fail at that one um, so for me, the battle that I've been having recently around sexual relations um, with a partner is, is that I, I, was, I knew I was able to go to the cross and, and lean on the cross and have Christ as my cornerstone to give me the, um, to give me the ability to be able to, to, do, to do this. And I think that, <clears throat> oh, and going back to um, um, Joshua, what they did every time, what he did every time is he, after all of the battles that he fought, that he fought, he then came back to the other side of the Jordan, uh, back to where it all started and returned back to the cross. And I think what that's telling us is, is that we go to the cross for the advice, for the strength, for the guidance. And then after all is said and done and we've done our day and we've overcome that battle, that Jericho, then we can take it back to the cross afterwards and we almost download. So, and that's what I've been doing. I've been with this current, Jericho that I'm fighting 
is that uh, and I don't know how many days left I've got the 40 <laughs> but still um but nevertheless I'll be taking it back to the cross at the end of this and, and seeing where I go from here because it may be that I'll continue to stay celibate until I actually meet somebody and settle down who knows um I don't know but this was I think God also gives us a way God says you know here is a path and you can take that way I for me it was Len although as Christians we don't um do Len as such but it was part of the 40 day wilderness you know that was my way of saying okay here is my faithfulness this is what I'm doing okay thanks so in so what um Neil's saying is um we can't we can't just leave fasting for Lent you know so part of a Christian walk has to be there has to be some form of you know um surrender form of surrender so it's great that you you know we, uh, we get to Lent and we, we we think okay well what can I give up do you know what I mean that's great but in what in in terms of releasing as as my um as my brother said Dick about releasing some of those demons that are in us you know sometimes we have to take drastic action because if we were to just work work in that window of Lent we'll be we'll be in trouble so it's showing us that fasting here as my brother said is a very very important part of our walk and you know it's something that we should be doing regularly you know in our walk it's something that we should be kind of like saying okay right I need to replace that because I've got some some stuff going on I need to kind of like really kind of like really break this you know this thing whatever it is that's that falling in my flesh whatever it is at that point or that given time because if we look back in the scripture in verse eight yeah when when it talks about uh verse eight where last week what Gemma was talking about I'm just going to quickly refer back to it verse eight can someone read verse eight for me please Titus two verse eight anybody certain there certain speech that cannot be condemned but one who is an opponent may be ashamed having nothing evil to say of you sound speech that cannot be condemned very important as i'm coming to you very very important you know so it's all well and good we're going to the cross sometimes we might be going to the cross in a place where we're going yeah because I come, i'm too ashamed or do that but the cross might be saying to me you know because many a times my walk my, my 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 instruction has been simply go and get accountability around this stuff around who are placed in your life you know sometimes that's how the cross speaks to me particularly when I've got gear going on or stuff going on and I'm trying to lean on my own understanding you know because I can get really caught up with yeah I'm just going to go to the cross but you know I have to remember about leaning on my own understanding because you know the bible says when two are gathered in my name that I am in the midst of you that's what it says when two are gathered so then we're, we're talking about uh, rebuke uh, we're talking about teaching we're talking about accountability you know there, there, there's something there you know you, you know Jesus discipled 12 human beings and discipleship he said go out and make disciples of all nations hallelujah so he said go out in twos to preach the gospel go out in twos to do the work of the great commission hallelujah so there's there's an accountability process going on with the body hallelujah the body of christ is made up of the members we've got to remember that the body of christ is made up of members who's at the head of it of course it's christ but it's members is the structure of the body of christ which means there's going to be accountability in there hallelujah s over to you oh, bless god man yeah um just before you were uh saying that i was thinking like you know sometimes like um when we first came to Christ and stuff, we used to try and like uh, find loopholes in the Bible. Uh, can we toy with this sin or that sin? And, uh, you, you know, I found myself like, you know, going into something and then obviously everything, all hell breaking loose, so to speak, and then coming back in and doing well for a little while and, and just kept going in and out of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, like when, since I started learning about fasting, I started to do, start to fast it, um, did some fasting, had some powerful times of it. 
But at the end of the day, I was always like asking, I was always, well, thinking, but not asking God, well, how, how should I fast, right? So there's the whole thing, sure, about we can read the Bible and fast and we'll get something out of that. But um, what I learned recently, just a few months, just a couple of months ago, um, maybe, no, maybe, is it, maybe it's only three or four weeks ago. Basically, um, I before Lent started, I kind of got into reducing food and just cutting all, loads of rubbish out before I even got into Lent. So I was doing some fasting anyway. And then I got, I, it must be God that led me into this three-day fast because it was pretty easy from the standpoint of not eating, although I had some times, a little bit times of fatigue, but also had some great times of great energy. But what happened this time was I took the three days. I didn't just fast when I went to work, you know, and, and not spend any time in the word. But I started spending some time in uh, just like obviously the word, obviously declarations. But then there was also like a, a guy called David D uh, Diga Hernandez, who was doing a lot of um, I was just listening to sermons. And at the end, he would pray and I would stand up and I, would, I knew that I wanted to defeat lost. Right because it was just up and down and uh, and and it's like you know you, you do you go a few few days a week whatever uh, but then I'm not going to go too much into that by the way but uh, at the end of the day like once I fasted and I spent time literally in the word praying waking up in the middle of the night praying because I was going through some anxiety as well so I was like constantly speaking the word there's some times when I felt really really weak like I was just about to give in not to food but to give in to like what the devil was trying to feed into my mind, into my spirit, it was from, you know, through my soul. And I just ended up like, yeah, after the three days, it was like loads of things broke off. Like I broke off supplements. I broke off. So we talked lust. We're talking about all sorts of things. We're talking about caffeine. We're talking about uh, junk food. I'm a trainer, right? But junk food and, and, and all these different mm -hmm. addictions mm -hmm. broke off. <laughs> and and then since then like, i haven't I, I take a little bit of supplements here and there some vitamins and stuff but i try not to go you know take it too like take it too much and uh, I, I just don't have a reliance on it like i did before you know i used to have there was a uh there, there was like a supplement i would take to give me energy during the day or i'd be drinking something during the day and since that broke off it's like whenever something comes in that's a temptation uh, stick on the Bible for a little bit and it just kind of just dwindles. And it's like, it is, it's like, the, the, what I realize now is it took me 10 years. There's no point in going, like, and this isn't meant to be bad. I'm not saying anything against anybody, anybody's thoughts or uh, any comments that I've heard on that, but it's really not worth it to go, oh yeah, I feel good now. And then just go and do something again, like maybe after Lent or something, right? Because you'll just end up like the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh, and what I believe is, after some research, and I'll shut up in a minute, sorry. But basically, um, what, I, what I understood is that Pharaoh, he, when he had his heart hard hardened, he actually had his heart strengthened. So he went back. So this is what I understand. If I'm wrong, God forgive me. But basically, um, I, I heard it preached and I decided to look into it. And there was a time when, God went back to, you know, he said, look, you, you won't, you keep doing this with my people. But every time that he was beasted, he would let the people go. Every time he was thrashed, he let the people go. And then God would strengthen his heart is what I understand it as. So then he was in a position to make his own free will. Because if he was just hardening his Pharaoh's heart and just giving them a hard time, how is that like fair, right? So he give him his own choice. And then that's why he come up. And that's the way I see that when we, stop sinning for a while we feel great and then we think we can get away with this or that because it's not because we still got this spirit not necessarily in us but attached to our soul and it's the one that's feeding us it's the one that's just hanging around and believe me like recently when i was fasting i actually saw them in the spirit so like little what this one was hanging around me for a few days a couple of days it had a green face and it just kept going <laughs> like darting all around the room and I could see it, but it wasn't physical. I knew what it was doing. I'd be on a call and I could just hear it whisper, like, saying something in my ear. And then, and then, and then it would just, and then it'd be like, ha ha. And then it was crazy. And then I was praying for somebody a few days ago and I saw this black thing, which was long and it just looked like a, like a beetle with big black eyes. And it was just like, it just appeared and I could see it. And so 
we can cast things out, but if we're not, as you said, because it says it doesn't say just be filled, does it? it says be continually filled. And you're singing psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, making them look to, to the melody in your heart. And when we do that, that's when we can go, ah, Christ's presence, God's presence is better than any sin. And then we can begin to be victorious. We can begin to take the right action and not just stay in there. Oh, I rebuke you, I rebuke you. Oh, no, it's right. Oh, God, I tried. No, we actually stand on it. Boom, boom, boom. And, it, and, and, and it, you know, it says stand firm like three times, I think it is, in the full yeah. arm of God. Amen. Stand firm in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I thank you and I bless you. And I just praise you for freeing me. And I'm just looking forward to more freedom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, amen. The garment of praise break off the spirit of heaviness, man. Do you know what I mean? So we can't, we, we, you know, we have to kind of like be in line with what the word of God says, because at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? Like we are going to be challenged. Listen, they're, they're out there. Do you know what I mean? My man just put it on. I love the way he put it. He put it on a plate. Do you know what I mean? For those of you listening out there, it's real. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> this is real. Yeah, this ain't no gear that we're making up here right now. This is real heavy. You know what I'm saying? So I love that, you know, and it's so true, true. Do you know what I mean? Because when you get deep, when you get deep, you know what I mean? And when you go deep, you see what things are around you. You they, they, you can, like, listen, the evil Gavins are around right now. Do you know what I mean? And I don't want to give them no power right now, but they're right now looking. It's the, the, the Bible says, seeking place where he can devour. And, and, and I think my brother said it earlier on, you know, to come in, you know, if we're not, if we're opening up our portals, basically, and allowing stuff to come in, they will come in. So we need to be making sure we're blocking off. Do you know what I mean? And we're not allowing stuff to come in. You know, we've got to be careful. We've got to be watchful. This is what this being sober is all around. It's not about not having a drink. Let's 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 be let's be let's be very very clear. It ain't about not going out and have the pub and having a having a light out. It's about let's be aware of what we're doing, what we're saying, who we're speaking to, who we're allowing in, who we're having around us. You know, listen, we've got to be careful. Be watchful and so forth. You know, Jesus warned them. He said, and you guys are still sleeping. Many of us are still sleeping today. You know what I'm saying? And we can't afford to be sleeping on this walk because it's detrimental. It's a different level. You, you, you know, particularly, I'm not saying us in recovery is making out, you know, but listen, when I, for me to use is for me to die. For me to use is, you know, the house is gone. The three kids ain't got a dad. Do you know do, 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 do you know what I mean? Jail's institutions and death. It ain't like I'm going to have a light L down the pub. Let's go and do some Bible study around the pub and have a little drink and a little light L. It don't work like that. Let's go and have a little prayer up in a little Bible study in, 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 in the prayer group down the pub. It don't work like that for me, unfortunately. So I've got to be watchful. I've got to be sober. I've got to be kind of like mindful. I've got, to, you know, even in my household, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, I've got to be you know, that power of example. I've got to be that father. I've got to be that 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 example. You know, um, you know that patience. And and I think it's it's key to talk about here. You know, if we go back to the previous passages last week, self control is the big one here. It's all about the self control, and this is where the sanctification comes in. And it's like. We need to be delivered from it. <laughs> we need to be delivered from the things that try and creep back in, which means from our program perspective, we need to get honest around that gear, around whatever it is that's trying to creep in, because none of us have arrived. Paul shows us in this particular scripture, and it's really, really powerful stuff there in this morning. Chloe, over to you. Amazing, amazing. We, 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 notice, no, we're still on four passages of scripture here. This is powerful. Over to you, Chloe. <laughs> yeah, I just really loved what S was saying. It just really spoke to me. It gave me so much conviction and gave me a real tool to use as well, like um, some stuff I'm struggling with. But um, it really like also spoke to me about the accountability, you know, that accountability when we get on this, it's, it's all, I heard so many people in the church say, you know, when I come to God, it's God that knows the real me. You know, there's only a few people that know the real me, my mum and God. And I just had to say like, you know, you, you're in the body. 
you know, we all should know the real you. There shouldn't be a mask on. We all need to come and speak our truth to one another. And when we have that accountability, we're able to have a teachable spirit because I'm not going to come and tell you something um, knowing that I've got that I've got that fear lingering saying, oh, well, if you tell them, you're not going to like what you hear. Do you know what I mean? But so when we come to someone with that accountability, we're already coming in with a teachable spirit. We're coming in knowing that we're going to hear something that we're probably not going to like. Mm. Um, and I found it so powerful is when when we, you know, when the enemy loves to be a secret. He loves to stay in the shadows. He loves to know that he's not even there, that we're not even aware that it's going on or it, what's attached to us or what's near us or what we're fighting. And he loves to not, he loves to take away our authority. He loves to us not to understand our authority. So when we start to see these things in the spirit, it's not to scare us. It's to show our, our authority in it, that they're nothing to be afraid of. Once we are in the grace of God in the new covenant, there is no fear. There is nothing because we have all authority in Jesus Christ and they hate it. They mm. flee. Amen. So when they start to get revealed to us, Amen. that we start to see stuff. I had one the other night that got revealed to me and I just had to stand in my authority and just like that it goes. It's not anything to be fearful of. I think there's a real like taboo of, oh, we can't talk about it because people might get afraid about it. We need to teach one another the authority we have in it because they are nothing to be afraid of. Not when you're in the body, not when you're under the grace of God. Um, and that, yeah, they just love to stay a secret. So then when we're not accountable, how are we able to bring all that stuff to the surface? How are we able to uproot it? Because we can't do it ourselves. We can't. Yeah, I find it really, really woken me up. I don't think I'll be able to sleep. Amen. Powerful <laughs> stuff, powerful stuff. here, and, and it's important, yeah, when we look at uh, the word teach, which I think was found in, in verse 9, um it, it that, that it elsewhere is rendered to train or to chasten. Um I'm going to move it on, guys, on this one. It's to train and to chasten. And when we're looking, when we're looking at this particular passage here, when we're looking, uh, let, I've got something, I just want to get into there. One, two, three. Okay. It says the word tra render train or chasten, it was used of Moses in reference to the wisdom of Egypt, you know, and it came out in Acts 7 22. Uh, and Paul references it to the law in Acts 22, 3, as chasten or chase. It is used of our Lord in Luke 23, 16, 22, and of believers in Hebrews 12, 6 to 11. And it is thought then of the training and the discipline by grace through the experiences of life. God has given us our life experiences to share with others, you know, and, and in order so that breakthrough can happen. You know, imagine the powerfulness of, you know, you guys sharing tonight about, you know, Chloe just sharing about her experience, you know, Esprit sharing about, you know, his experience. You know, that's that's empowering us right here, right now to overcome, you know, because we know there's going to be challenges. Yeah. You know, and the scripture tells us God gives us a way out because he gives us the power, the power that's in us and to resist the enemy. So he will flee the power that's in us, the resurrection power. And he says the instruction is threefold, past, present and future and twofold, negative or positive. So the past is denying, having denied, having denied it, literally the present is living and living for the future and the future is looking for and looking unto jesus looking for him in every situation looking for the resurrection power looking for the power of the holy spirit looking to him as the author and the finisher of our faith and it says in verse 13 where it covers verse 13 it says verse 13 to all people it teaches us to say no 
to ungodliness. It, the grace teaches us to say no to lust. The grace teaches us to say no of the things that are no good for us. So when they enter and they start popping and they start challenging, like Cheltenham all week was trying to say, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Let's have a quick buck. Do you know what I mean? The grace teaches us to say no. Hallelujah. The grace teaches us to deny the things that try and enslave and entrap us because we have the power of Christ in us, as Chloe just said. So it's it, it's powerful because, you, you know, if we go back to last time, in, in this particular passage, he said, we're not slaves anymore. We're not slaves to sin. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. Do you know what I mean? We sing it. I am no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. So the conduct here is for all believers. We got it right here. It says the present, posit present and positive aspect is expressed in our living. Hallelujah. So, you, you know, it's like, we have to be mindful where we live because we've been watched. I've been watched 24 seven by my children, by my wife, by those around me, by those in the community, by my church, by you guys here on faithful. We've been watched 24 seven, not just by the enemy, but by those that are around us. That, that, that power of example is important. And it says it needs to be expressed in our living as Paul's great testament that prison comes to It says, for me to live is Christ. And it's the Christ is in me. Philemon's 121, the great advert spells out a manner of living soberly, living, living, selfward, righteously, manward, godly, godward, and between each in the English language, it emphasizes the deliberation and it's placed upon us in this present world he's not talking about salvation he's talking about the here and now right here right now that we can live this godly life in this world with all this commotion madness darkness insanity that we all see around us but we can live this godly life amen hallelujah that's the power that he's given us the power and it says it's, it's to mention this age it naturally applies to the coming of age with bright hope that we have that hope in matthew 5 in the sermon of the mount it's the hope it's the hope in christ it's the hope in him it's the hope and glory that that gives us that cause to be happy in all situations because we're rejoicing in him hallelujah and it gives us many blessings in that realization father lord we thank you this evening we thank you for each and every single one of us ah, father lord we just we, we just see that this has been set up nicely for us as believers that we can come to you tonight that that we can look that there's only one definite article that links the two terms God and Savior, that these remarks made above us regarding to the identity of the hope and the appearing glory of the equal force that's here with us tonight. Father, we thank you tonight that, that heathen cults were in a habit of calling human leaders and false deities by terms such as great God and Savior. And it seems clear that Christians deliberately applied these subline terms to Jesus Christ as the only one with any right to them. He's the only one who's got any right to each and every single one of us. And we then as believers are to be disciplined by the grace to look for an appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, that no longer we will be slaves to sin. We can be veiled and in the flesh in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that, that we are here today because you give us hope. You give us hope that, 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 that the others and the positive part of the purpose is to purify us, purify each and every single one of us. Chloe, Rory, Claire, Neil, um, Dick, S, Barbs, Ryan, in the name of Jesus, Kevin, Gemma, myself, the whole of the faithful ministry, anybody who's listening to this right now, purify us, Lord, Lord, and, and, and bring us that righteousness of Christ and that justification that's taken from the courts of law and express, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that that redemption comes from you. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that verse 15 sums up all that has been stated in the previous chapter. The things to be spoken were principally and immediate 
Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that especially in the view of rebellious, because we can all identify with that rebellious part in each and every single one of us. We've, we spoke about it tonight in us and we've owned it. We can see it. We know it's part of us, but we know that we're renewed and transformed. And we know that the old has passed away so that we can live this new righteousness of Christ that's in us and crucify that part of it the same way that Christ, you know, was resurrected, that resurrected power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Let no man despise you, that the minister of the Lord reflects his Lord's character by being meek and gentle, but also being authoritative teaching. We see it clearly in Matthew 7, 28, 29, that meekness and gentleness does not mean weakness and spinelessness. It means weakness and gentleness. And, and it means that the direct center of reproof, it can be reproof from fear of offending somebody so it means that we can approach each other to correct in meekness and gentleness and 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 and, and have that fear of not being offending somebody because we're approaching it with love it's important that we do that it's this is what this passage of scripture is calling us to do don't just kind of like just leave it and just kind of like you know be in that place where you're just ignoring it have the courage and ask god for the boldness to kind of like you know have the open courageous conversation conversation with one another you know that we can just build each other up and stir each other up and we can receive it as it as Gemma said with love it's so important father we thank you this evening the, 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 your grace is sufficient for each and every single one of us we thank you tonight for opening up our hearts you know that we we were four lines of scripture and uh you brought us to a close tonight god bless you all it's been an absolutely wonderful we'll start um on uh, chapter three next week which is about subjection to authorities and uh, also the maintenance of good works hallelujah saved by grace to produce good works hey, amen good works to produce yeah. your pre salvation. Done before, it like that. Amen. 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 so we've been saved by grace the fruit of the spirit's in us and uh, and, the, and we are the sort of light of this earth and it's the and it's just beautiful that we could be here and uh, we'll continue with that next week so god bless you may god keep you may god shine his face upon you and may god give you his peace go and bless and go and serve the lord amen amen god bless you thank you thank you thanks everybody god, god bless you, you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.